press has been applauding Senator Joe Manchin, a notorious obstructionist within his own Democratic Party, for allegedly reaching this groundbreaking social spending deal and climate change deal with Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Apparently behind the scenes, while we've all thought that the Build Back Better agenda was dead, Manchin and Schumer have been hard at work negotiating, figuring out a way to pass some version of it. And as you can imagine, when we're dealing with an individual who personally profits from the fossil fuel industry to the tune of literally millions of dollars a year, just 500 million, I'm sorry, 500,000 each year from coal alone, of course, you're gonna get legislation that actually ends up giving tax subsidies and all sorts of handouts to individuals who have no interest in doing anything to combat climate change. In fact, they have every interest to exacerbate it as long as they're making a profit. So let's get to the details. What is the agreement that they've reached? What is the likelihood that it'll pass in the Senate? Well, here's what we know so far. In a joint statement, Chuck Schumer and Joe Manchin say that the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 (laughs) will make a historic down payment on deficit reduction. All right, let's just stop already. I mean, I'm sorry, there are a lot more details to get to, but it starts off with deficit reduction, which is allegedly a priority of Republicans when Democrats are in charge, but never a priority for Republicans when Republicans are in charge. And I might get that wrong, I don't know, what do you think, Emma? Well, first of all, let's just say how amusing it is that he uh, now agrees to it when it's the Inflation Reduction Act, right? I said it on the show today, but it's like telling a kid that uh, their broccoli is candy, right? It tastes just like candy. You you can pass legislation, Joe Manchin, it's just, it's called inflation. Uh, It's it's there to combat inflation and that's the only way he got on board. But yeah, of course. The whole deficit reduction angle was his way for to get the child tax credit, to get all of these other provisions struck down from the Build Back Better legislation. And now it's just a shell of itself as 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 we expected. Right, and and to be clear, this agreement between Schumer and Manchin, as far as we know, does not include the child tax credit, or at least making the child tax credit permanent. Now, the rest of their statement says as follows: Invest in domestic energy production and manufacturing. That's an incredibly important part of their statement. We'll dive into that in just a minute, and reduce carbon emissions by roughly 40% in eight years by 2030. The bill will finally allow Medicare to negotiate for prescription drugs, not all prescription drugs, some prescription drugs, let's be clear about that, and lower healthcare costs for millions of Americans. Additionally, we have reached an agreement with President Biden and Speaker Pelosi to pass comprehensive permitting reform legislation before end of this the end of this fiscal year. And look, there's a reason why there was this mention, this reference to energy production twice in the statement that I read you. It's because the priority here is to increase fossil fuel production within the United States. And the way that they sell it to the American people is to make them think that, listen, the reason why we're really feeling it at the gas pump right now is because all of these lefty Green New Deal policies, which have never passed, have led to this incredibly expensive gas at the pump. And we just need to produce more energy because these leftists have destroyed our ability to produce enough energy within our borders. But the fact of the matter is the United States is the top energy producing country in the world. We're also the top exporter of fossil fuels in the world. And so you might be wondering, why is it that we're exporting fossil fuels when you know we desperately need supply here in the United States to keep prices low? Well, it's because those fossil fuels are not owned by the American people. They're owned by multinational corporations who get to do whatever the hell they want with it, including selling it abroad to the highest bidder. So this idea of increasing energy production which will come in the form of allowing or expanding energy production on public lands, just means that it's a huge handout to the fossil fuel industry. And there is no guarantee that those resources will benefit us in any way, shape or form. I've got more details on that, but Emma, I wanted you to jump in. 
Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, it's very, also similar to what we saw with this chips bill that just passed, which is notable um, because that's a semiconductor uh, industry bill that gives them billions of dollars to create jobs and manufacture semiconductors and chips here in the United States. But as Bernie Sanders said, he was the lone Democrat in opposition to this bill. Um, there's no guarantee that, uh, not this bill, I should say, but to, to chips. Um, there's no guarantee that the those uh, funds will come back to the taxpayer, even though taxpayers are subsidizing these this uh, new manufacturing, these new semiconductor um, uh, chips and, and all of those things. Uh, but it's similar with this legislation as well. When you give giveaways to the oil and gas com uh, companies and say, hey, domestic manufacturing, they're multinational corporations, let's be real here. They sell to the highest bidder, they don't keep it within the United States. The only way to ensure that would be to nationalize our oil and gas companies, which is what we should be doing as a way to phase them out and save our planet. But that is the Joe Manchin's worst nightmare because that means, hey, no more profits for me and my buddies. Now, I want to be clear and, and just say that right now, this is an agreement between Manchin and Schumer. Uh, it has not been voted on in the Senate yet. And I'm referring to this uh, spending bill uh, that they've agreed on. Uh, it's a little different from the chips bill, although there's now an issue with the chips bill, which I'll get to in just a moment. Um, but let's give you some more details in regard to this agreed upon legislation by Manchin and Schumer. Um, and I want you to remember that the initial Build Back Better social spending bill was proposed uh, to spend about $1.5 trillion, okay? Keep that figure in mind as I read more details to you about what it was whittled down to. The bill, the new bill, will include $739 billion in new revenue through a 15% corporate minimum tax, which, and I'm adding this part for myself, will be stripped out or stripped down by Kirsten Cinema because she has not weighed in yet. And I want to be clear that Kirsten Cinema has been the most vociferous against any type of wealth tax hike, corporate tax hike, or tax hikes in general. She has been against it, she's been vocal about it, and she hasn't weighed in yet. So the idea that this is gonna pass with some increase in taxes for corporations is laughable to me. And if I'm proven wrong, I will be elated to come on air and tell you that I'm proven wrong. But that's my my prediction. Kirsten Cinema will be against the minimum 15% tax rate for corporations. They'll strip it out and this will be nothing more. Or the majority of this legislation will just focus on corporate handouts to the fossil fuel industry. Now it also includes prescription drug savings and added IRS enforcement. It will limit the so-called carried interest tax break. The bill will also include $369 billion in spending on energy security and climate change and $64 billion in funding for the Affordable Care Act for a grand total of $433 billion in spending. So. The $1.5 trillion Build Back Better agenda got whittled down to a potential corporate handout bill that will cost $433 billion. There will be more than $300 billion in deficit reduction, the one page summary released by Schumer and Manchin said. And you know, you have Biden touting this, even though it is unrecognizable from what he had initially put out. And you also have the media applauding this because it's bipartisanship, right? I mean, even though you, not that it's bipartisanship, that it's an agreement between Manchin, who in my mind I really see as more of a Republican, but he's still a Democrat, and Chuck Schumer here. They're hoping that it'll just pass through reconciliation, meaning that they would need just a simple majority in the Senate, the 50 Democrats to all vote in favor of it. And then you would have Kamala Harris be the tie breaking vote. No Republican is gonna vote for it. The media has celebrated this as like a really savvy move by Democrats because they managed to pass the chips bill in the Senate with Republican support, meaning they didn't have to go through reconciliation. And they did that before this agreement between Manchin and Schumer were announced. So now you have Republicans who are very upset. They're very distraught. They feel like um, you know they've been hoodwinked by these uh, savvy and strategic Democrats. Um, and now you have uh, Republican lawmakers in the House saying that they will not vote in favor of the chips bill, which really doesn't matter because uh, Democrats control the House. Uh, but you know, Emma, thoughts on the strategy 
Do the Democrats in the Senate deserve credit for the way they went about this? Do you think there's any hope that there could be some you know, good elements to this final legislation? It's a complicated answer, I think. Um, mostly no, right? And I don't wanna give this legislation credit as a complete shell of what was initially proposed. Um, David Dayen pointed this out, but it's about a year to the day from when we found out that Manchin and Schumer had this secret backroom deal in the middle of Build Back Better negotiations that Manchin was not gonna go over, over that $1.5 trillion top line number. Um, and yet Schumer let those negotiations play out. It was Kabuki theater and uh, you know, Bernie was like, let's do 6 trillion. Then they agreed on 3.5 and then all along Manchin said, I'm not gonna go over 1.5 trillion. They get it down to his number last summer mm -hmm. in these negotiations. And he goes, sorry, still, still no. So he cannot be trusted here, of course. Um, so there is a bit of, sad poetry to the fact that that was basically almost a year ago to this day. Day, I will give Schumer a rare bit of credit on this uh, on this strategy because if he had signaled that there was going to be this agreement between him and Manchin and McConnell thought didn't think that this was dead, which I mean, I think he was under the impression falsely, which is crazy that they actually duped Mitch McConnell. He would have clogged up the process. So the chips bill, which has been Schumer's pet project for many years at this point would be uh, McConnell would put all the Republican opposition behind it. And they would have been forced to go through the reconciliation process, which circumvents the filibuster. And then they would not have that ability, that route to go down with this bill. And that would have effectively killed everything. So the entire Biden agenda or whatever scraps there are left of it would have been dead. Mm -hmm. um, so the strategy I actually do think was a good one. Uh, the only I wish they would use smart strategies for things that aren't just that matter competitiveness with China. Like I mean, I, yeah. I, I I think you if you did a deep dive into Schumer's donors, I would imagine that there's some industry in New York that uh, he's trying to benefit here. Like there is something that is behind his passion about this particular bill. And oh, for no doubt. Yeah. Especially in I mean, you briefly uh, referred to. The weaknesses in the chips bill, but yeah, I mean that's not a bug. I would argue that it's the feature. It's there's a reason why it's an incredibly weak bill in regard to actually benefiting ordinary Americans. But I wanted to just quickly juxtapose the conversation that we're having, which is a nuanced conversation full of contextual information to understand how we got to this place that we are today, with this headline from the Atlantic. Hmm. And it's in regard to the same legislation, the same agreement that we're talking about. An astonishing new bill from Senators Joe Manchin and uh. Chuck Schumer would put the US's climate goals back within reach. Would it? Would it? So let's talk about that. Let's, because I want to focus on that part of this, um, you know, legislation. So, uh, Bloomberg of all places actually published a pretty good piece on this. Titled Mansion Wins Big Nods to Oil in Deal Ending Log Jam on Climate. Oil gas lease sales considered linchpin for mansion support. Green groups rage at measure, they say undercuts climate goals. And it does undercut climate goals. So the measures require the sale of drilling rights in the Gulf of Mexico and Alaska. The bill would also make new renewable power projects on federal land and water contingent on future sales. Joe Biden campaigned on a pledge, by the way, to block new oil and gas drilling on public lands. And again, we're already the top oil and gas producing country in the world. And we export much of these resources across the globe. And one person who works over at the Center for Biological Diversity, Brett Hartle says this, this is a climate suicide pact. The amount of leasing this bill mandates is absolutely massive. I don't think the climate offsets are enough to cover all the drilling that is going to happen. And I wanna be clear about what this means. So they are going to increase drilling leases on public lands. Those are lands that belong to us, the American people. 
And while those public lands will now be used by the fossil fuel industry to maximize their profits with absolutely no guarantees that will actually help lower energy costs for ordinary Americans, the consequences of this increased drilling will be socialized. The acceleration of climate change is something that we'll all pay for, while the profits that these companies will reap from these public lands will be privatized. That is how the system works. So anyone celebrating this is like a massive breakthrough for climate change is just lying to you. It's so silly, it's just juvenile really. And um, some of the stuff in there is like uh, car- carbon capture is included in the legislation. Right. And that is such a pet project of capitalists that want to continue drilling in uh, in perpetuity. So, hey, you know, we'll we'll do whatever we want. We'll admit as uh, whatever we can, and uh, we'll just capture it back. The technology is not as close as they claim, and yet they still rely on this because it is a false solution to not actually stopping drilling, stopping fossil fuel usage. And of course, this bill relies on that. The climate provisions in here are a joke, and and they claim that. Uh, it'll get us down to 40% reduction by by 2030, if I if I'm not mistaken. And mm-hmm. I think anybody serious who is looking at this legislation, it it, it makes it clear that that is not a a, a viable um, outlook about what this is going to do. Particularly because it's just about private sector incentives and tax credits. I know it's not a realistic solution to say we need to nationalize the oil industry within our current political climate. But this is the kind of emergency that we're facing. These Mm -hmm. companies are uh, ravaging our planet and without serious seizure of their assets and dismantling of companies that are making this planet uninhabitable for us, uninhabitable I should say. Then we're not really having a conversation about what we need to do about seriously tackling climate change. And this is not serious in the least because Joe Manchin's at the head of it. Yeah, and that's the final thing that I'll touch on because I think it's an important point to make when it comes to assessing whether or not proposed legislation or the outcome of these negotiations really will yield the kind of policy that Americans have been demanding. It's not about whether or not these lawmakers are good guys or bad guys. It's not about whether or not they want to do the right thing in their hearts, okay? It's all about whether the system that our government is functioning under incentivizes good legislation or bad legislation. And currently, the system indicates that our elected lawmakers, our so called public servants, can be personally and financially invested in industries that they then benefit from financially, right? So when you have Joe Manchin making $500,000 a year from the coal industry alone, and I'm not talking about campaign donations, I'm talking about the money that he makes through his personal investment in the coal industry. Do you really think that conflict of interest is not going to play a role in the policy decisions he makes? So if you really want policy that speaks to the demands of the American people, you have to change the system. You have to do away with incentivizing the bad behavior that we've seen from Manchin. And to be quite honest with you, I think when you reform a system like that, you probably wouldn't even attract the kind of self-interested egomaniacs that we have in Congress today. Because if you can't get rich off your position of power, why would you do it? I mean, I, I would argue that a lot of those lawmakers would make that argument, maybe not publicly, but certainly privately. So we want a system that's going to attract people who actually have an interest in being public servants. But that's yeah. not what we have right now. And that's why I just, I think anyone who's been paying attention can expect that this legislation is gonna be a disappointment. Yeah, I mean, last thing I'll say is Joe Manchin, with all of that context that you just provided, he chairs the Energy Committee in the Senate. Yep. He chairs it. He got it as a, you know, hey, if we give this to you, will you not obstruct the Biden agenda? Will you uh, be a good soldier for the Democrats? And look what it got them. No, you got to play hardball politics, twist his arm, uh, do more. Because there's a lot of skeletons in his closet when it comes to corruption, and Merrick mm-hmm. Garland could get busy 
investigating some of those things if Biden was actually serious about what he supposedly stands for, which we all know what the reality exactly. is. Exactly. Thanks for watching the Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.